Hello, and welcome to Learning the Social Sciences. Today, we are going to be looking at the experimental method in psychology. When psychologists perform an experiment, they form a hypothesis and decide on what variable they will manipulate. There are three different types of experiments. A lab experiment allows for more control over the process and the variables while a field experiment can show behavior in action. A quasi-experiment, or also known as a natural experiment, might be chosen because one cannot perform that experiment in another setting, as it would be unethical. However, if the item researched occurs naturally in the real world, like say you're looking at personality and alcoholism, then the researcher can collect data. A psychologist needs to write a hypothesis or a testable prediction before an experiment can occur. To write a hypothesis, one should start by gathering as many observations about a topic as they possibly can. Then one would evaluate the observations and look at possible causes. From there, they could write a list of explanations that could be used as a basis then for an experiment. The hypothesis needs to be able to be measured in some way and needs to be able to be falsified. It contains three items. First, it states the problem, then it proposes a solution, and finally, it states the result that should occur. A psychologist may also need to create a control or experimental group. For example, if they are testing a new anti-anxiety pill, these groups will be needed. A control group is made up of people who do not receive the experimental treatment. They are randomly selected and are important as they are used as the comparison to the experimental group to see if there was an effect or if change occurred. The experimental group is exposed to the independent variable of the study. The independent variable is the item that is manipulated or changed. For example, the researcher may want to see if listening to faster paced music helps marathon runners have better times than those who listen to slower paced music. The independent variable in this type of study is the type of music that they're listening to. The dependent variable is what is being measured or the runner's time. You could also look at that anti-anxiety pill that I discussed at the beginning. A control group would be given a placebo or not the anti-anxiety pill, while the experimental group would be getting the pill. A researcher must also make sure to have firm operational definitions. This describes how variables are going to be measured and defined. For example, if a study discusses that it is going to experiment on preteens, defining the people by age would be more specific operational definition. Or if one is looking at motivation, then they have to be able to link that to something that can be measured, like homework completion or time spent practicing a musical instrument. Some operational de definitions are difficult to measure. For example, how would you operationally define happiness? One might try on counting smiles, but some studies have shown that people may be smiling for different reasons that are unrelated to the study. So you could get skewed results. It is better to have an operational definition that can be easily measured, like looking at the scores of an ACT test when looking at intelligence. One final item to note when conducting an experiment is if there are confounding variables or a variable that had an impact on the dependent variable that can make the results difficult to determine. One must analyze the data to see if the results are due to the confounding variable, the independent variable, or because both are present. For example, if you're doing a sleep study, then a confounding variable could be caffeine intake. In the end, a research psychologist will follow four basic steps. They will form a hypothesis, then they will create a study and collect the data. Next, they will analyze the data and see if they can draw conclusions from it. If they are able to then draw the conclusions and it matches the hypothesis, then they can share their findings. Thank you very much for listening to this short explanation of the experimental method in psychology. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Bye-bye.